Edwards Theater is proud to present this year's Lincoln Medal to Stephen A. Schwarzman. Well, my mother would have been happy with that intro. <laughs> Thank you, Val. It's not every day you receive a medal from an Olympic champion. <laughs> now we're just missing the podium and the national anthem. For those of you who don't know, Val is a truly remarkable athlete. In addition to her Olympic gold medal, she's won two world championship medals and holds the American record in the discus. I've watched her career as a multi-time recipient of the Schwarzman Grant from the U.S. Track and Field Foundation, where I sponsor 100 track and field athletes each year. Having Val here tonight prompted me to think about her journey. A dancer turned discus thrower. That's got to be a first. <laughs> sharing the room tonight with some of the most influential people in Washington. It also made me think about Abraham Lincoln's journey. Nothing about his early life would have predicted he would become one of the greatest presidents in our country's history. Lincoln himself described much of his early life as the short and simple annals of the poor. Living in abject poverty, having no formal education, and suffering life-changing tragedy, losing both his mother and older sister before adulthood. His attempts in politics weren't always successful either. Having lost his party's nomination for Congress once, two Senate races, and a nomination for vice president, and yet, he went on to lead our country through perhaps our most difficult time, the U.S. Civil War. Each of us has a different journey with ups and downs. All we can do is approach each day with our best effort. As Lincoln said, I do the best I know how, the very best I can, and mean to keep doing so until the end, which he did. That's what I try and do in business, in philanthropy, with the opportunities I've had from time to time to help leaders in Washington from both parties. I've been reading books about President Lincoln since I was a child. So this medal is particularly meaningful. It's humbling to be in this sacred place, looking at that box, and see from here where the course of our nation was changed with the assassination of President Lincoln. Most historians agree that if he had lived, the direction of our country, which would have taken after the Civil War, would have been dramatically different. In closing, I'd like to acknowledge a few people. First, my wife, Christine. She has the world's most positive attitude and boundless energy and is a constant source of support for me. She told me this is her best weekend ever in Washington. <laughs> She's a Broadway producer herself, and she loves show tunes. <laughs> it can't be better than the White House with show tunes <laughs> in almost every room. <laughs> Second, I'd like to acknowledge my brother-in-law, Lieutenant Colonel, soon to be Colonel, Don Carmichael, who's one of the oldest serving doctors in combat in the military. In just the last few years, he served in overseas missions with the Navy SEALs, as well as in Syria. 
Don's in the first row. Why don't you stand up? I'd like to thank Don for his service to the country. Finally, I'd like to thank Ford Theater Society for this tremendous honor. I'd also like to commend Ford's on its dedication to celebrating and advancing President Lincoln's legacy, which is critically important, especially today. Our country could benefit from his values and spirit, one of integrity, bipartisanship, and a dedication to the better angels of our nature. Thank you again for this wonderful recognition.